Hi, thank you so much for stopping by Jeff Ball Photography on YouTube. The next video you're going to see is one I recorded last night, courtesy of Pamela DeCamp with the Tri-State Camera Club. It's a presentation I made to them last night. And the topic is astrophotography with the gear you currently own. The goal was to present some techniques and some strategies to consider for astrophotography, for using the night sky to maybe expand some different approaches to what you're already doing with your photography. And the goal was to not incentivize anyone to run out and buy a bunch of expensive equipment. So we go through three techniques plus one bonus technique. And I encourage you, if this is of benefit to you, I encourage you to stick with the video and watch it. It's all about an hour long. There are some questions and answers and we get into some nice conversation. It's a great photography club here based out of Ashland, Kentucky, but it encompasses the entire tri-state region with Huntington and Ironton and Portsmouth and everybody in Eastern Kentucky. So it's a great group. I think it's a nice video, especially if you're looking for some new techniques or some new approaches to use. If you have any questions, always drop me a line in the comments or send me an email. All the links are out there on the uh, interwebs. So I hope you watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it. And uh, until next time, clear skies. Okay, Jeff is going to present to us tonight about how to do astrophotography with the gear that we have. I know that we're also looking forward to actually meeting face to face again. So this is as good as it gets right now, but you know, we'll just have to see how things unfold here the next couple months. And I'm willing to help out with this as much as I can. So with that said, Jeff, I'll let you jump in and get going. Well, thank you so much for having me out. And I found this for a lot of our groups to be a really productive way, especially if you, when you have distances, uh, people spread out across a large geography. So I hope, I think some of the national groups I'm in I hope we continue to have this type of a remote gathering always uh, as, a, as an option. It's a money saving, travel saving, more convenient option. And so, and I know you guys probably have some members that are, I don't know, you get out past 60 miles or 100 and some miles uh, to get to a meeting. So I think these are always good options to have for, uh, for remote virtual meetings for the groups. I don't think we'll ever entirely go back to the other way exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think a hybrid is going to happen a, a lot in a lot of cases. Me yeah. too. Um, not that the in-person ever gets substituted. We, we always like that. And so I wanted to talk, what am I doing here? What do I do here? I share screen. Do that. And now I can see that. Oh, oops. I lost everybody. I can't yeah, we're see still here. Face. I can't see everybody's face. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the main point of today is I hope so many times you go to a photography talk, somebody's lecturing, and it ends up being a very costly talk, right? You walk away with, I have to get this new piece of gear. I'm really hopeful that today, what you just walk away with is maybe some motivation to get out under a dark sky, which is always time well spent with the gear that you have, trying some new and different techniques. And Ashland has some really cool things, I think, going for it that I would like to maybe explore uh, especially those new those new uh, sculptures that are down on the river. Uh, and I think lighting wise, that might be hard, somewhat challenging to incorporate in a nightscape, but I think there's something to be done there. But uh, just to maybe get some of the creativity wheels spinning and maybe give you a new uh, angle to work on on, astro on photography, to expand your photography out to a new area. So I'm hopeful you don't spend a dime after we have this talk. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way because anytime an astro 
photographer or astronomy <laughs> comes forward, yeah, you know what happens. Everybody's got a good Uranus joke ready to break out. So that's that's in honor of my brother-in-law who always has to have a good Uranus joke whenever the topic turns to astronomy. So if you got one, get it off your chest. But <laughs> <clears throat> and I think uh, well, one of the one one of the first things I wanted to do while I still have everybody uh, on on vocal is to see if anyone was able to image the comet uh, or view the comet. I know Pam and I think Donnie got out, but did anyone else have a chance to uh, photograph and image the comet? I didn't, but my son got out and he got a couple of pictures. I think I posted them to the Tri-State Facebook page. He got a really nice one with the comet at the bottom and it really showed the Big Dipper right up above it. Yeah, I think those were nice compositions we had there uh, probably about a week ago or maybe 10 days ago. That was a really nice uh, composition for a wide angle to have. Good constellation. Was it just a tripod based shot that he did? I think it was actually with his phone. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I'm starting to see the phones pushed to the limit when it comes to dark sky photography. I mm -hmm. haven't, um, I believe, I have the 10S. Now, one of my astrophotographer buddies has the 11. I'm not sure which model of the 11 he has. I think it's the one that has all of the lenses, the the wide angle and the uh, and the zoom. But I believe they now have an option. I think he can get to a shutter speed of 30 seconds on his iPhone 11. And so that really starts to open up a lot of potential to capture some pretty dark environments uh, with that type of shutter speed. I'm not sure what ISO you can if you can control the ISO, I know you can get some apps that can manually control your iPhone. So the, the definitely the portable phones, the iPhones, the mobile devices are going to, they're never, the chip is always going to be the limiting factor in the pixel in pixel space, pixel sizes. But they're, it's amazing the progress they're making. They're going to allow us to do a lot going forward. Um, what I wanted to show is, um, I was able to put together a, um, this is the blog on my page. And what I did, I just assembled all of my comments. So I want to just e emphasize that when a comment like this comes around, we don't get a chance like this very often. Really, this goes back to the Northern Hemisphere, it goes back to hale -Bopp, which was 97-ish, 98. So you, you, you don't, we don't get what I call a, a, a photographic opportunity, a comet in the landscape. And I took this shot because I wanted to, I wanted to show people that you could, this is obviously, I'm almost looking, I am looking over top of downtown Huntington. I'm in the Huntington. And I wanted to show people you could walk out your door literally and see this comet from pretty much anywhere you were. This was on July uh, 8th. And then uh, this, it was coming up in twilight, and it really we never really had it in dark skies. So it was a lot of twilight. So this is on uh, Greasy Ridge over in Ohio on July 9th, just a tripod based shot with the 85 millimeter. Then I wanted to capture a farm scene. I'm always trying to think about objects to capture um, in the landscape. I like rural settings. I don't like uh, a whole lot of man-made structures, but I will go for farms and silos. And so this is up the Ohio River on Route 7, another 85 millimeter. I'll probably stack some images to reduce the noise here, and we'll go over that in a little bit. This is a 250 Jeff, millimeter hold on a second. Uh, focal uh, length. Jeff, hold on a second. Telescope. And this is Jeff. tracked. This is some shots tracked. Again, we're still in twilight. And then the comet started to move into some darker skies. This is a 400 millimeter shot. Uh, this was around July 12th. Then this was my best shot. This is with the 135 millimeter lens. Now this was taken on July 18th. And this is a stack of 30 images of one minute each. So this is 30 minutes of exposure on a tracked, uh, tracked uh, star tracker. And so that's from Spruce Knob, West Virginia as well. So the conditions were absolutely perfect. This was taken about a week ago. 
and with a 400 millimeter focal length. And my purpose in this is the tail, it's called the ion tail. And the tail, what's happening here is this, the nucleus of the comet is spinning. And there is, there are gas jets that start, you know, spew out the dust and the ice and the particles of the comet and it spins. And it spins and creates these waves of particles that, uh, uh, you know, with, with, and everything's moving away from the sun. This is the sun's uh, solar wind that's pushing these particles away. So while the comet looks like it's moving in this direction, it's actually moving in that direction, <laughs> away from the sun. So uh, that, that was the purpose of this shot. And that's the last shot I got. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it was a glorious comet. And I hope uh, we get another one. Uh, heck, I hope we get another one next week, but never get tired of them. But I want to encourage you next time we get one to definitely pursue the um, pursue the comet as much as you can. And so that I started thinking about this, and I'm all, I think everybody's always asking, so what am I doing? Why am I doing photography? And there are several ways to answer that question. I think. Many of us just enjoy a lot of the technical challenge. You know, I heard the one gentleman talking about teaching Photoshop and uh, to and Lightroom, and just the gear has gotten easier to use. I think I'm going to say that with with some preface. Pre preface, um, it's a little more automated. We obviously get real feedback. So versus the film days, I think we could all agree it is a little bit better. But the thing is, we try to push it more and more. So we push our gear more and more, we push our techno technique and our post-processing a little bit more and more. But to me, uh, maybe you're answering this like I do, and that is for me, when I take an astronomical picture, I wanna cause a life interruption moment for my audience. And everybody has their audience. Each one of you has an audience. It could be your spouse, it could be your children, it could be, you, you're probably underestimating the size of your audience. So I'm here to, to really give you an incentive to always remember that you have your audience and it's bigger than you think and you're impacting them more than you probably are giving yourself credit for. But I think you can see this, but I can't see it all. But I want people to say, hey, I wanna say, hey, stop what you're doing and see how majestic and beautiful the universe is. So in the midst of all of our Facebook conversations and debates on masks and no masks and all of that. I want people to stop and consider and contemplate the, the majesty of the universe. So that's the whole point in my taking astrophotos and what I think of when I think of my audience, my whole goal is to, hey, take a second, slow down, stop and look at this. Of course, if your motivation is make a million dollars, you know what they say about how to make uh, a million dollars in, in photography, you got to start with two million dollars. So, uh, yeah, we we are very good about that. So, I, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. But the common won't be back for 68 years. At 6,800 years, and uh, so just never forget to uh, pick up your camera and take a shot at it for uh, when the next comet comes around. <clears throat> 